<laughs> uh, welcome to Jim and Rob over Analyze Movies, a live video podcast for people who love to talk about movies as much as they love watching them. That's right, everybody. The internet is screwing me again. <laughs> anyway, tonight we are going to be talking about Rhymes for Young Ghouls, uh, the debut of a Micmac writer, director Jeff Barnaby, uh, his feature film debut. Uh, folks may remember uh, this was early in Gemini's uh, streaming career, uh, back when we had dozens of subscribers, now a few hundred, which I'm very proud of. Uh, but you may remember when we did uh, took a look, uh, a deep dive at Blood Quantum, which was a uh, politically infamous zombie movie. It was, uh, I, I thought it was pretty damn cool. Anyway, um, yeah, today we're going to be looking at Rhymes for Young Ghouls. Came out in 2013. And let me just grab my show notes here. Ah, here we are. Okie doke. From the Internet Movie Database, Red Crow Micmac Reservation, 1976. By government decree... And that's Canadian government decree. Every Indian child under the age of 16 must attend residential school. In the kingdom of the crow, uh, that means imprisonment imprisonment at St. Dymphna's. Uh, this being the local uh, religiously uh, uh, controlled uh, orphanage uh, or uh, residential school. Um, that means being at the mercy of Popper, the sadistic Indian agent who runs the school. Anyway, uh, this movie was written and directed by uh, the aforementioned Jeff Barnaby. Stars, and I'm not, I'm going to mispronounce her first, her Micmac uh, name. Uh, so I'll uh, say Kanawa, Kawena here, Devery Jacobs. It also stars Glenn Gould, Brandon Oaks, Roseanne Superno, and Mark Anthony Krupa. Uh, yeah, uh, folks, this film, as far as the, let's take a look at the, bear with me. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, social nutrition checklist. That's it. Um, yeah, uh, other than it not being union made, because it was made for a bunch of government grant money, about a million, and a half, about a million and a half dollars, um, does it pass the Ayla test? Well, seeing that this test is named after the main character in this movie, yes, it does. Uh, does it pass the Bechtel test? Yes, very well, multiple times. Uh, and is it a class conscious film? Is it working class conscious? No, that's not the heart of the story, but I would give it a consciousness score, a check mark there, because it's certainly aware of its indigeneity. Um, the, the, the lived experience of, uh, uh, indigenous people on, uh, within the residential school system and in the Canadian reserve system, uh, these people governed under the Indian act, which I think it's still called anyway. So, um, with that out of the way, uh, let's get back to what I like to, a little thing I like to call historicity. Um, okay, as a white settler, um, I wouldn't be able to comment on how accurate it is myself, or I would be loath to, I'd be very uncomfortable with that. But a lot of indigenous uh, uh, writers, historians, uh, have praised it for its mid-70s accuracy. It certainly, to me as a viewer, felt accurate or if movie accurate, let's say, um, that said, regardless, uh, what I would recommend is, and I got a number of links together, uh, worthy. If you want to take a deeper dive, uh, first of all, there's an introductory, uh, Wikipedia article on the Micmac link in the description. Also, uh, another introductory article, uh, on the Canadian Indian a Canadian Indian residential school system. Um, I also, though, included two other things. Uh, the A link to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, including its final report and all the action items that uh, sprung from that. 
uh, that was a uh, an effort uh, as part of a uh, class uh, class action lawsuit settlement. All the survivors of the residential school system. Um, part of it was to you know travel the country to get these stories, to get that history, but also to educate, let's say, settlers. Um, uh, a result of, uh, let's say, colonial settler ideology uh, to understand, uh, if not their complicity, their how they benefit from what was going on here and what happened in in settlers' name. Um, and for those of you unfamiliar with the term settler settler colonialism, I found a really good uh, introductory discussion of that language. Uh, and I also have a link to that in the description. Um, know your politics, folks. All right. With that out of the way, I think I am uh, just about ready to uh, get this show on the road. Of course. Uh, oh, and it looks like I don't even, I, I don't have any freaking streaming problems. So with that out of the way, I am going to uh, unmute Mr. Jaboyko and bring them in. Oh, look at that. We don't have Jim. Just a sec, folks. Uh -huh. uh, of course, it would not be the first time that, uh, yeah, Rob screwed the pooch somewhere. Let's try that. <laughs> I think I think I got it. I think, uh, oh, nope. <laughs> Touch wood. Oh, am I gone? Uh, you're gone, but we can have you back. Don't you worry. Ooh, disembodied voice. <laughs> nope, not that one. And I think that we've got you back, Jim. <laughs> and we're still got streaming going on. I think we even have people in the chat. This may we not do. be an absolute disaster. We may have a good time. <laughs> DMG says in the chat, <laughs> Shaw must have heard your rant. They just froze the stream as soon as you finished. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, was so a little bit of a blip, uh, but it looks mm -hmm. like we're back on. And uh, and uh, yeah, Jim, uh, before we say hello to the chat, before we catch up with you, why don't we why don't we just jump right into it? Jump right into the spoiler sure. zone. And uh, do we want to have a quick conversation about craft? Um, and then we'll get into the meat of the uh, the story and, oh boy, the politics, the meaning. <laughs> sure, yeah. No, I uh, a few words about craft. Uh, a couple little notes here. I thought it was, you know, it's set in the 70s. Um, not that that's really an important uh, element. I think that, you know, there's a couple of cars in it that we see and, uh, and some of the clothing. But uh, they have a blues soundtrack, like a, a really nice, neat blues soundtrack, which I thought sort of was an interesting uh, choice. Uh, other than that, though, I really love, uh, you know, uh, ultimately, maybe a bit of an uneven movie, but I really love how it was shot. Like, I, I think some of the shots were quite amazing. There was a montage of of people being beat, beaten up outside the uh, Fish Mittens Club. And it was almost like a Leonard Monkman uh, uh, sort of tableau, <laughs> you know, with a, with a sort of a, a long, with all these things going on at once. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 Leonard Monkman's a, a Canadian uh, First Nations artist. Uh, uh, you could probably you Google image him uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but he does sort of interesting work. And, I, and I, there were some interesting things with that. I like the little dive into animation. Uh, there's some, you know, it looked to me to be like almost like a Borderlands kind of uh, video game influence, you know, with the masks. Uh, Barnaby seems to be into masks a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was re had a great look to it. They used Autumn really well. Um, but yeah, I was a, a couple times I kind of went, oh, you know, great shot. So yeah. that's that's, you know. Yeah, aside from story and, and meaning, which we'll get into, uh, yeah, I thought it had some really interesting visual elements. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jim. It's a well-made movie. The only thing I would add to what you said is it's such a well-performed film. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, outstanding performances. I mean, of course, uh, uh, and rightly so, uh, I believe the woman's name is Devery Jacobs, um, but everyone was solid. And... Yeah. Um, was there any other than hers? 
uh, would you, is there anyone you, I, I think uh, Koopa should be praised for his villain performance. Uh, yeah. But was there anyone else that you think really should be noted for, wow, that's, that's spot on? You know, I think they all sort of grew into their roles. We're so many, so many times we, we see First Nation characters on uh, on screen, and they they I mean they're given a handful of lines, but some of her uh, some of her gang I thought sort of grew into their roles a little bit. They took on personalities, and these are things mm-hmm. that they're not always given a chance to do. Uh, you know, as a as a First Nations uh, a- actor, uh, so yeah, she. Like, why does she not, why is she not called upon to, to do more? Like, she's got a great presence, and I thought she was phenomenal. She's got, actually, so she's uh, part of Res Dogs, uh, one of the yes, leads in yeah. that film. She's actually got a growing, uh, a growing uh, a body of work. Yes, yeah. Um, what I would say, and this is no knock on prey, which, folks, I swear to God, eventually you'll see something from us. Um, it'll be very edited and condensed and mostly me, which, because uh, yeah, it's a terribly long story. I'm sorry. Anyway, but I would say she is, I, I think her performance is just plain better than like almost like an order of magnitude better than um uh Ms uh, Mid Thunder uh Amber mm. Mid Thunder as the lead of prey now is that a result of the because of the subject matter and the direction you know maybe the story just didn't allow Ms Mid Thunder to bring more you know maybe yeah. but if, if you're to put the two against each other it's like yeah, you you you'd you'd be like, no, I I mean, as depressing as dark as the subject matter is, I I want to watch her. I want to mm. watch Devery. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, she was in uh, Blood Quantum too. So that's yeah. uh, uh, I was thinking, where have I seen her before? Something to do with CBC, <laughs> probably some CBC show. But it, you know, oh wait, probably. it's a thing we did. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh well. Um, well, and, uh, yeah, well, like a lot of directors, when they find the talent that kind of, that they understand each other and can get what they need from each other. Yeah. Why change? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, with that out of the way, um, I want to move into story that said, I think it would be worth, uh, just saying a quick hello to the chat. Yes. Um, Hi, chat. Ooh, look, at, look at all that chattery. Yeah, we, yeah, they're they're uh, they're at it, and and of course, uh, we, we're already referred to DMG. But let's uh, once again shout out to him, five hundred subscribers, which is outstanding. Yes. Here, here, Brian. Um, yeah, Dragon Movie Guy. Uh, you may see him on the channel uh, coming up quick. Actually, we'll we'll talk a bit more about that later. Who else do we got, Jim? Oh, we got our pal from Perth, Australia. Missed in Australia? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Oi, no. <laughs> Mr. Bowren, uh, good late morning. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy, sir. Um, well, what would well, you've been to Australia, or, or perhaps Matt should tell us. What is the standard, hey, how's it going greeting for one Australian to going? another? Hmm? How you going? I think, how you going? Not how, how you, you doing going? so much. Oh, okay. How you going? Yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. Ahmed, Jelly Duck 100. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, bud. Good to see ya. And uh, I, I think I mentioned this before, yes, but he is now a Twitch affiliate. Uh, he also has a pretty cool, yeah. very vampire-y uh, what we do in the shadows profile picture. Uh, yes. Saw that. <laughs> you saw that, eh? He's been doing some branding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who else do we got here? Oh. Richard. Katie? Richard and Katie. <laughs> Richard L. and Katie Fowler. Good to see you guys here. Hey, guys. Um, all right. I will tell the chat, uh, if you can, much like DMG did, if you want to draw our attention to it, at Rob Christensen, because it shows up in a nice bright orange, as you can see in the chat, I'll see it, and I'll make sure that I, I bring that comment up. Okay. Um, Jim, let's get into the story story of it and i wanted to ask you this although it is 
it's a bit of a revenge, like it's pitched as a revenge tale. Mm. Uh, that said, would you call it that? Like, I mean, I think that's one of the things that goes on in the story, but would you call this a revenge tale? Yeah, you know what? It I think the running time is like 85 minutes and uh, 88. Like one, is it 88? Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, still under under 90. And they managed to take a couple of different turns in there. Like there's not tons of room to maneuver, but uh, there's, you know, it's a revenge flick. It, it sort of turns into sort of kind of a heist thing uh there's uh there's some supernatural elements uh there's some fable there's a couple um uh episodes of storytelling within the story one of which is an animated segment um and so reminiscent of one of the 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 last or the second last harry potter movie yes yeah i really enjoy that like i saw it and i'm like i like that (laughs) <laughs> I like that mix of, of sort of different styles. You, animation often does that. They go from, they have their standard animation all through the movie. And then somebody tells a story and the animation turns. So that's kind of like a, even Pixar does that a lot. Yeah. But um, so the long story short, I think it's a young filmmakers. It's like a young writer tries to jam too much into a book. It, there's almost like too much going on here. Uh, and that's yeah. one of the issues that I was kind of wondering about. Like it, it, does this take too many directions or too many turns? Uh, I still liked it, but uh, yeah, it, it was jam packed. I think young, it, it just struck me as a guy with a lot of ideas going off at once. And, uh, and uh, yeah. How, uh, let me bounce this off you. Um, and, and I kind of agree with you. Like I, I, I was, my head was going in the same direction as you were until I sort of, I, I tried to take a step back And then I kind of thought it really is about a change in this young woman's life. You know, you have Mm -hmm. this defining moment when she's young that leads to a certain life. And then like a bunch of stuff happens. And then all of a sudden she transforms herself and is transformed by stuff that happens. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Is this then better seen as a, uh, an indigenous buildings Roman, you know, a coming of age story. Yeah. You know, she... or, or a character study almost, uh, perhaps. Kinda. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was sort of wondering, like, I actually didn't take that many notes because I was still trying to figure out what was going on. I usually, you know, watch it the night before and then sort of ruminate about it the next day. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I was sort of, it, it, I think it's a bunch of things at once. And that may be, again, one of the one of the faults of of, of the movie. Uh, I, I in, in here end. I gotta I, I, I'm not willing to let go just yet. Uh, yeah. I think the Harry Potter reference. Think of Harry Potter. It's both a building's Roman. It's also a detective story. There's uh, a bit of adventure, like like a mm-hmm. an adventure story as well. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I almost want to watch it again, thinking of it as a coming of age. You know, yeah. um, it's bookended in a way by her father being taken away by the police mm-hmm. for a crime he didn't commit. Um, uh, but yeah, that it's that it's really about this young woman's, uh, you know, growing up too fast and then having an, a, another you know, like a, 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 a means of like integrating all of this. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I saw, I, I saw a, a oh, wait, one sec. Let me I just saw, put that sure. out to the chat of uh, folks. Yeah. How would you describe this? If you could put it all in one line, you're telling someone, ah, it's this kind of story. What would you say? Uh, I'd love to hear from you, uh, whether you're in the chat now or a uh, link in the, uh, or just a uh, comment on it uh, when you're watching this now. We'd love to hear what you thought. Okay. Sorry, Jim. Get back, back to, back to no, Jim. I, back I was to just Jim. I was trying to figure it out a little bit today and uh, was just doing a little uh, reading to see if I could find anything about the making of it. Somebody actually compared it and I guess it would have come out right at about the same time with the hunger games, but they said sort of unlike a, a, a you know, sort of a, a uh, uh, not real world Katniss. This this 
woman, young woman actually has some pretty shitty things that are, you know, going on and, and, you know, her obstacles are perhaps even more frightening. Uh, so because they're, they're actual truth. Yeah. 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 It's not a, this, this is a fictional story, but it's, it's a, a an indigenous a, a too many indigenous uh, uh well indigenous peoples first nations mm-hmm. have experienced this yeah and frankly you know what was kind of interesting was the stories that the characters would tell each other that's where kids go to die that's where the devil eats them up they throw them down the pit and we don't often see that from this from their point of view yeah. we see it all, largely from you know the white savior or or the the, 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 the colonial writer. settlers perspective yeah yeah, who just found out about this and and still hates it, but it's like, did you know this happened in the seventies well, and this one yeah. child went missing and <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing? So yeah. we don't often see depictions of them saying, "Oh, that place on the hill that creeps me out." Yeah, and that was actually pretty informative, yeah, uh, emotionally and and sort of you know factually too. Yeah, no, that uh, yeah. Did you find, notwithstanding the like your concerns about the story did it hold you to the end like did, what what sort of emotional impact did it have on you as as a yeah. viewer well i mean i i have to say even though i knew it passed the isla test i was still you know any like you and we've we've talked about this a little bit in terms of movies anything to do with that sort of cruelty or you know the threat of someone being um it's like a personal fascism, you know, it, yeah. it, uh, it, it's that it's that being tied to a chair and interrogated. And, and, you know, you sort of you were waiting for the other shoe to drop, I think, through the whole thing. So I was just trying to, like, get to the end and and, and find out that that, you know, uh, bad things didn't happen. Uh, that I that I knew she passed the Isla test means I knew she wouldn't be raped or killed yeah. uh, and and she wouldn't necessarily have a white boyfriend who came to save her or anything like yeah. that so yeah it's almost um, like a it, it's a weird relief. that it's like a brand of don't worry <laughs> mm. <laughs> which yeah, is kind yeah. of awesome this it's passed like, the like, ala test you go oh thank god i I've, I've really seen enough young yeah. women murdered and raped i you know I, maybe you, we need something for all <laughs> like just to say yeah. don't you worry you know Attempts may happen. It may be discussed, but you do not have to, you know, vicariously experience it. If you remember the old computer game Mist, one of the best things about it was nobody was after you. It's like, oh, I could solve this puzzle in peace. Now all I need to do is quit my job and work at this for <laughs> this color palette for thirty six hours, and I'll figure it out. But but with you know, also with the Ayla test doesn't mean she's not threatened though, and it no. doesn't mean that that that, that she isn't hurt. Danger isn't present. Yes, exactly. It, it, so it hurt, damaged even. Like I mean, yeah. this, this is a damaged character, and mm-hmm. um. Again, going back to the kind of story it is, although now I think we are moving into meaning here. Um, mm. It is a, uh, it's almost a story of healing in a in a mm. weird way. Um, yeah. The the these folks have overcome. They she even has a new like a, a instead of burner, it's the other dude whose name I cannot remember. Uh, but that character is like, come on, you're, you know, I'm not letting you grow dope anymore. I'm not letting you, you know, although I got to oh, admit, I think that's a very more a later, like that they're referring to it, uh, as a grow op. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's a nineties into the aughts term. <laughs> it's uh, the older, the older man you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. is it Gisigu perhaps, but, yeah. uh, yeah, the, I mean, there was the other thing, too, is there was a couple of really seemed hastily drawn characters like him, mm-hmm. the sort of the ultimate mentor and the young boy that saves her. And they're sort of so um, there's such a best case scenario type of character and they come kind of out of nowhere that I sort of wonder, are these parts of the fable? Like, are these sort of like little 
helper characters or something like that. The, the little boy lets her out of, you know, sort of saves her number one. And then spoiler alert on top of spoiler alert shoots, shoots our antagonist in the face. Uh, pretty successfully. And he's uh, never, in- he's also never seen like, except by the kids and mm. that adult, I think, or almost. Yeah. yeah. I could see how you could. And who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe it was, uh, almost, maybe we're seeing a bit of the the earlier DNA of the story. Maybe mm. in an earlier draft, it was more mythic that these were more, um, yeah, wise old man. Uh, this kid is a helper because he's almost uh, that kid, the resident, resident kid. He is almost a like a ghost, a stand in for yeah. her, 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 her dead little brother, you know, and, yes. and almost yeah. a ghost. He says very little, he's not a chatty yeah. child. Um, oh. Of course we saw what goes on at the residence, the residential school. It's like, well, I can see why <laughs> you probably just learned to, I'm saying shit. Yes. Yeah. You know, in any language, <laughs> unless I absolutely have to. Um, yeah. All right. Let's let's get to meaning. Um, I I am wondering, <laughs> what would you say, given the the wide ranging story that this has going on? What Jim would you say this this film is about? You know, I think it has to do with. Uh, generational healing uh, and i may be way off on this if you look at the older characters just about every one of them including burner yeah fails the young the the younger generation the ones that are in their teens so whether it's pauper whether it's joseph ayla's father and uh, the mother you know as 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 much as the mother had good qualities teaching her how to paint obviously had a had artistic yeah. an artistic soul um you know she was she was uh, both of them ayla's a drug dealer right and she's learned not to not to use her own stash and that's something that her parents didn't even learn so you can sort of say that yeah. she's kind of a smarter uh a smarter kind of drug dealer but that i mean well and it's, it's much learned it from burner you know, it's like, I don't want to yeah. be that idiot. You know, yeah. But, yeah. So she's, she's sort of, I mean, she's still mired in this life, but she's gotten smarter about it. Uh, in spite of the fact that virtually every adult has failed her and, and, and all the rest of the kids. So, and then at the end, there's a note of hope uh, and it is an older gentleman. That's this, this sort of, uh, crudely drawn mentor yeah. that, that says, okay, we're going to, you know, things not, are going to be a little bit I'm different. Or I can't remember what this. this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So letting you and, I'm not letting you deal, deal dope. You're no longer a yeah. grow operator. And she's starting to uh, address her, her, you know, she, or she does address her mom and her, her late uh, brother. And, and it, that's not seen as a bad thing. I no. sort of like the fact there's a couple scenes where they're there in sort of a zombified state, not in your traditional zombie state, but yeah. they're undead, but in out of focus, but just beyond her shoulder. Yeah. Uh, that I thought was another neat, uh, neat angle. Uh, they show them in focus sometimes too. Well, no, but, so like, so I, 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 go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. Can, keep going. Uh, I was just going to say. So I think it's generational. I think it's about shedding the old generation and and sort of you know looking to the horizon and and maybe uh, getting on with things. If that doesn't sound too flip, um, I you know what I. I I'm not a hundred percent sure there because I, I think yeah. as a film, it acknowledges that even though these characters are acknowledging, Hey, we didn't do right by you. Mm. Uh, as she said to her father, when she finally has this, you know, she lets her, her emotional barriers down a little bit of an on the nose, uh, <laughs> dialogue, but it worked. She delivered it. Um, there is a, or it's it's kind of surrounded by notwithstanding the father's guilt and the mother's overwhelming guilt, which is why she yeah. does kill herself. Mm-hmm. It, 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 at the same time, it's like she's buried in a grave outside of consecrated ground because the fucking actual pricks who created the whole context under which these people are almost guaranteed to fail 
Mm-hmm. In the in this particular instance, it's a Catholic church runs a residential school. Every mainline church got its mitts in that horrible crime. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's where, yeah, that she, yeah, there there is a, almost an intergenerational healing that she does makes, uh, you know, uh, it, it's why her father can still continue to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Like, cause he is sacrificing. It's why she says, thank you. Yes, cause he yeah. is there yeah, for no, that's her a good point. as yeah, best yeah. as she can, or as best as mm-hmm. he can, given the, the, the constraints and, and yeah, again, like the actual injustice. Uh, yes. Are they the best parents in the world? No, but let's keep in mind <laughs> there's fucking <Yes>. popper. <laughs> there mm-hmm. is the, what, what is the thing that when they finally get to round them up, all these things have happened and here you person we have decided is guilty are on the water when we have said the Indian agent has decreed yeah you're not allowed on the water like yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's no fucking fish in the what who cares not allowed yeah. and, and <laughs> he's able to be dragged off like and I think that's really important here that I think she's actually in in some ways she is she is also coming through for her parents, but they're coming through for her. Like uh, the mother has gifted her with this talent. The father is willing to sacrifice for his children and does, Yeah, you know, just yeah. as he sacrificed for his wife. Um, even Burner, well, he's an idiot, a lion fink of a man. Um, yeah. You know. I, he's almost I, kind of. You know, when we were just talking about this didn't movie, he's a little molest her, didn't yeah, you know? That's true. Did, you know, that's true. Tra- trained her up in a trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, and and given the limited economic choices of a kid who's got to pay a tax so as not to be sent to the Catholic school, mm-hmm. for fuck's sakes, <laughs> yeah. which is really again the system saying. Uh, you know what? You can break the law. We might catch you and throw you in jail anyway, but we know where this money's coming from. And we really like money. We really love the money in the collection box. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I can see that too. And, and I, what I was uh, kind of thinking about was that in early scenes, like the very first scene is just sort of like a little house party and the kids are sitting outside. Yeah. So and, and the movie, even though it's, you know, made by an uh, indigenous or, or First Nations uh, director, it doesn't shy away from the fact that, the, yeah, these aren't ideal parents. Uh, oh. Having said that, though, yeah, I do acknowledge that, that the father has, I mean, that's a theme in his life is taking the hit for someone else. <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah. it, 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 that's, that is a good point. Even when he did him. offer Popper, the young Popper, yeah. apparently a born sadist. <laughs> You know, yeah, um, yeah. and, and again, it's funny, actually, some of these characters could be considered caricatures uh, and I'm thinking of yeah. Popper specifically, but yeah. it's like, no, those we, we've, we can read about them in history books. We can read about them in the truth and reconciliation report. They were mm-hmm. there in concentration camps. They're in fucking jails right now. Mm-hmm. There are people like that doing yeah. horrible shit right now and could be wearing a cop's uniform you know like it's not there's a there's a video making the rounds today of uh i think it's crawford alabama of three cops just daylight just slamming a guy's head into the concrete like in the concrete yeah and then they realize they're being filmed and they kind of went oh (laughs) so that's uh i'll get away with it it's 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 not a. I was afraid for my life. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Well, it's yeah. it's pretty horrible. But yeah, still still going on and. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and so let's come back to the let's come back to this film. Although it's a great film for that to kind of pull you out of uh, conversation, like to all of a sudden it just opens up, uh, yeah. uh, your conversation about what's going on in the world now. What do you think? Barnaby's key message in the film was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think or one it's, of the main ones. 
let's say. One of the main ones. Yeah. Well, that, I, I think that, that intergenerational thing, uh, the healing is is one of them. But, I, I you know, you're saying vengeance. I, I would think that where it falls down on vengeance that Burner isn't taken to task for it. You know, he, he basically just kind of uh, uh, um, betrays everyone the whole movie long. Yeah. Even up until the end. And so, you know, he doesn't ultimately get vengeance. So I don't think it would be just a, a, a commentary on vengeance. I don't, and, and this is why I question the whole vengeance. It's described, yeah. when I say it's described as a vengeance movie, I think that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a little bit of we're going to get Popper, but I don't think that's Barnaby's key thing here. No. You know, and, and Burner... And I think that's exactly it. There's a reason why Bernard doesn't get got. In a way, his whole life, he has been got. He was labeled by Popper as a squealer. Like publicly, yeah. remember? Like in that tableau <laughs> yeah. he referred to. And it's so, of course, money, yeah. he's, he's getting his ass kicked regularly anyway. His, he has mm. been turned into a snitch. By yeah, uh, yeah. again, another person who w- will would never could never have the means by which to get out of it. And although in 1976, by then, uh, uh, uh referring to uh, the parlance of the time, uh, Indians uh, could actually leave the reserve without losing status, and there were a lot already going into the city for work. Um, mm-hmm. Even the uh, the gray haired uh, good mentor talking about her grandfather and uh, fighting with the Japs like it was a weird. I want to watch that whole little anecdote again because apparently yeah. the grandfather was working on the high steel, like working construction. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, like, so that like was already did, happening yeah. a lot. But it was still the amount of power the Indian agent had to say yay or nay uh, to insane rules like you can't go on the water. Sorry, no boats on the water. Like, yeah. Why? Because this says. Oh yeah. You know, it's 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 bureaucratic as well, like that capriciousness. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it would just be you know, what another one of the um, uh, articles I read today said maybe instead of being called rhymes for young ghouls it should be rules for young ghouls you know basically how to and any any you know he's being cute he said oh that even rhymes but i think it was liam lacy from the globe and mail but um and i think he had a point there is that you know these are all just basically there is this cruelty it is pretty deep set deeply set and this is how we're going to survive it you know, we just got to rise up to it. And I think it was sort of a, a profile in, in, in how to do that. It, I didn't find that it was necessarily a cynical movie, no. um, which you think it would would lead to be. But it's just like they acknowledge it. You know, she gets punched in the face, you know, as a 15 year old girl that the sort of the f- the f- Ned Beatty to uh, <laughs> to the top cop there to the top Indian yeah. agent was just sort of know punches her off her bike and then kicks her for for no reason oh, and yeah. and and you know just the cruelty is so inherent that all you have to you know all you can do is try to rise above it i think it's sort of just survive that i yeah. think uh survival that, that, maybe yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if there's something though there's a scene near the end of the movie like we're well deep in the third act we're in the denouement yeah poppers he isn't dead yet um we haven't quite reached that moment, but that's really just, that's all part of the cleanup. Um, mm-hmm. She is having a, let's call it a vision. She is looking, at least looking back into her past where her mother is teaching her uh, to, to draw. And there's, you know, talks about, well, we didn't wear the kind of thing. Well, you know what? That's uh, eh, important to your dad. <laughs> you know, like they, they have this great little moment and, yeah. But I think one of the key, why are we doing this in the dark? And mom says, well, you know, one Indian, John and Indian on some wood, who cares? Two Indians. And well, that scares some people. And I think, I think there's something in that 
that one little moment near the end of the movie that really kind of speaks to this film in a bigger way. Uh, Cause what happens when she does that fucking stunning mural on the side of a van with very seventies mm. um, yeah. of a, you know, an indigenous hero, uh, a woman in indigenous hero. And of course, what does Popper do? You know, wipe away the face, you know, <laughs> cause yeah. Assholes be assholes. Um, yeah. But I think those those two things are tied together in in a, uh, in a way that I think kind of speaks to the, the whole meaning of the film. I can't quite articulate it. And uh, for those no, of you in the I... chat, I would love to hear your opinion. Or if you're uh, watching this later, please comment in the description. Um, but yeah, I think there's something there that kind of pulls everything together thematically, and I'm just not good enough to articulate it. It, maybe that's why. Here, interesting note, uh, Jim. Jeff uh, Barnaby blocked me on Twitter. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, oh, I was my trying God. to add him as I was putting the post up, and I'm like, what the hell is it? And I search it, and I'm oh, there we are. Click. You have been blocked. <laughs> I'm like, what? oh, well. Ew. Wow. Ew. I, you know what? Honestly, I don't think I've, well, Middle-aged white man says, I don't know what I said that could have been a problem. So could very well have been, I said. But I suspect, um, you know what, from Blood Quantum, we've spoken to it. I don't know. He probably hasn't even seen it. He might just every now and then scrolling his ats and go, two white guys talking about my movie? Eh, just block yeah. out of... I have zero Stay interest work. in hearing what any white guy has to say about my fucking movie. And yeah. you know what, Jim? I, uh, I'd be like, well, yeah, I'm okay. Cool. <laughs> Groovy. Cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, where the hell was I, where was I going wow. with that? Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I totally lost my train of thought there. <laughs> you are a rival. Uh, you know what? Maybe though, this is the perfect time. Like, first of all, uh, Jim, uh, what, what's going on? Uh, how, how are you doing? Uh, what's good, going good. on? What is happening in your life right now, or perhaps at 8 a.m. tomorrow? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be, uh, going on a, a short vacay, uh, very to cool. another part of Canada. So yeah, it's, uh, an early, I probably won't sleep tonight. It's funny. You know, I, I, uh, it's not even that far. And, and three years ago, we went to Australia. I can't imagine what a bundle of nerves I was then. But uh, I think it's the the idea of flying into Pearson, which is kind of scary. But <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, I just headed to La Belle Provence for a few days there. Wonderful. Never been there before. So 10 out of 10 provinces uh, all have been in. Uh, so Wow, yeah. just fun. checking that last one off the list. Good for you. Yep. Yeah. yeah uh, so. Any particular highlight you're really looking forward to? Uh, you know, just sort of, there is, uh, I kind of want to see, uh, my, uh, Ukrainian grandparents landed in Quebec. And I think that's, there's, a, I, I know where it was pretty, you know, old town, they called it the Louise basin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know vaguely where it is. So I'm going to see if I can, uh, just sort of see where they maybe set foot for the first time and, and yeah. sort of get an idea of that. Well, so they came to uh, settle in Canada. Exactly, exactly. And so for, for a little bit of background, I watched the uh, Hitchcock movie, I Confess, which is shot in and set as Quebec City. And wow. Montgomery Montgomery Clift is Clift. a young Anglo yeah. priest, and he actually speaks a few words of uh, of French. So it's, huh. uh, yeah, and the city looks great uh, in it. Wow. Uh, pretty, sinister, pretty sinister old town, of course, in uh, Alfred Hitchcock's hands. So that's that was a little bit of homework. That and Jesus of Montreal was the other uh, <laughs> was the other movie I used as yeah. uh, as a little bit of background. So yeah. cool beans, uh, Jim, yeah. uh, Jim. Just so you know, Matt. Uh, although it, it, lucky that I saw it, Matt is asking you when did you travel to Australia? Uh, and I'll remind the chat once again at Rob Christensen. Uh, yeah. Sorry, twenty nineteen, Jim. Twenty uh, August twenty nineteen. Uh, so it was pretty nice weather. Of course, it was midwinter for them, <laughs> but uh, I went swimming in the ocean at Brisbane anyway, and or off Brisbane, yeah. off an island there. Uh, but uh, nobody else was swimming, strangely. Uh, but yeah, just, no just before COVID hit. 
Gotcha. Just before COVID hit, yeah. Well, so. listen, since you're going to be away, but we're still doing a show next week. We are. First of all, why don't you tell us what that show is and maybe discuss how the heck we could possibly make that happen. Well, uh, we're, we're going to... Uh... First of all, if you know uh, a guy named Superman, he can fly the Earth backwards and spin time and, and sort of go back in time and go forward in time as well. So we're going to I won't be here, but we may have already. Hashtag spoiler something. alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the movie. No, uh, no. But yeah, taking so, a look at uh, a young man named Christopher Reeves, I believe his second movie uh, called Superman. Okay, <laughs> can I actually cut to the title? Uh, yes, folks, we are Sorry. going to be watching, uh, or next week, we are going to be discussing Superman the movie, the original, 1978. Uh, although one of our co guest hosts, uh, we've got uh, Brian, uh, aka Dragon Movie Guy, in the chat as we speak, and of course, Cody from the Brock upside. And Cody actually informed us that there was a, a Superman and the Mole Men, um, uh, you know, a bit of an, I think it's an anti immigrant, oh, yeah. uh, xenophobic screed uh, that uh, is uh, technically the first Superman movie. Uh, but uh, most people think of this one, and I want to think of this one as the first one as well. Uh, so yes, next week it is, but yeah, you know what folks, we'll publish it next week, but we did already record it last night, as a matter of fact, in two separate parts, because Shaw, uh, Shaw screwed me again. But um, what I do want to say it uh, to everyone is that uh, it'll be published next week, probably Sunday morning, sometime Sunday. Uh, and uh, if I can... Uh, at least myself, uh, maybe I can get a couple of the other co-hosts to join me. Maybe we'll be we'll we'll do it as a premiere, and at least we can be in the chat hanging out with you guys as we also just jaw about the movie. And uh, so that's very cool, Jim. I I wish you you know what that's awesome. I hope you have a great time. I can't no, imagine you. why you wouldn't. Um, nope. uh, one more thing before we get back to uh, the movie we're talking about this week, uh, I would. Uh, one more opportunity to beg you all for a subscribe, a subscription, a like, and a ringy ding of that bell. <laughs> Ooh, now that was a commanding ring, Jim. Uh, all right, let's get back to rhymes for young ghouls, and uh, let's talk about uh, the director. Are we giving Mr. Barnaby a pass? <laughs> I, I, of course, I suppose I could say anything with impunity. He's blocked me, so it's not like he's yep. going to see it. Or if he sees it, he's still going to go, I don't care about what you two fat middle-aged white guys think yeah. about my fucking movie. Uh, but yeah. what what uh, what are you giving him? Is it, is it an up you or know, down, a pass uh, or fail? An A or a D? Just quickly, I think I'd like to see more of this kind of movie. It is kind of uneven in spots, but... Um, uh, it's got vision, I think, and mm. and it's almost like when you watch an Australian movie, for instance. I'm not I'm, I'm not blowing smoke there <laughs> because of <laughs> one of our, our uh, audience, but you know, you watch an Australian movie and it feels Australian, and it often has a kind of a vision to it. Yeah. This is sort of similar. It's got a Canadian personality, and it's got the director's vision. Uh, I'll give it an A A minus. I, I thought it was quite uh, quite good. Uh, Could have yeah. used actually. I know funding was probably an issue. Probably could have used in about ten more minutes, uh, and maybe some of those things would have been ironed out. But yeah, this, as you said, a million and a half. I think that that's pretty darn good. Bang that's for a the very buck. good movie for a million and a half Canadian yeah. in twenty thirteen. In twenty thirteen, remember that yeah, it would have yeah. been Canadian. <laughs> so yeah, just north of a million USD. No, yeah. they they did a wonderful job. I think uh, uh, Barnaby and his whole team, the the cast is is they did a fantastic job. Yeah, I'd give mm -hmm. a solid A. Um, again, these it, it's interesting, um, and yeah, maybe we are grading on a little bit of a curve. You know, uh, first time director with minimal resources, uh, tackling some very difficult subjects. Uh, you know, and it's still like it ends up with a good, compelling movie. I, I'm, yeah. How can I say anything but an A? Um, yeah. Final thoughts, Jim. Um, 
and we'll, we will, don't worry, chat. We're going to take a quick scan to see if we can't, you know, pull in any, any, uh, comments. But, uh, again, if, if there's something you really want us to talk about, make sure you at Rob Christensen, then your comment. Um, Jim, what, uh, what, what last would you add? I was looking up uh, Jeff Barnaby to see what his next project is, and I and I couldn't seem to find one. Doesn't mean that there's not one in the you've works. Been blocked. <laughs> from, uh, <laughs> blocked from Wikipedia. How does that happen? <laughs> um, the uh, and Devery Jacobs too. I know she's done a number of things. I, I uh, this is something I always forget. Reservoir, and I'm not just mentioning it because it's another First Nations production, but. Uh, and we watched that other one that was on AMC, my wife and I, uh, what was it called now? It was just on this summer, but it was, it was pretty much a close to 100%, uh, uh, like a Navajo or, or from, from that area, um, production. But I would like to see more with Devery Jacobs as well. And I know she is doing other things too, but this reservoir dogs, I keep on forgetting to check if I have Res it. If it's dogs. On FX. Res reservoir dogs, sorry, dogs yes. is a- <laughs> something different. Yes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Thanks for the catch. Uh, Jeff Barnaby is somewhere in Quebec or New Brunswick rolling his eyes right now. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's one that I've I, I've been meaning to, to see if we have on our uh, VOD and I haven't yet. So, yeah, all, all the more power, you know, like this is a good I like this kind of story, like this path that storytelling is taking. Yeah, you don't necessarily need one of you or me telling the story it's it's better to hear it from the source i think yeah so. yeah no this is a it's a fantastic story it is um i really meant to, the title it's a little I, I i'm not trying to be facetious uh I, but i am a little having a little fun with it but i do think if you're a canadian uh I, i'm not gonna uh, Yes, should indigenous uh, folks uh, uh, happen to reside on the side of the border or see it? Sure, uh, but if you're a if you're a Canadian that isn't indigenous, uh, or if you're a settler, that's, I'm just going to start using that term on a regular basis. And folks, as I've described before, uh, there is a great discussion. But the short version is, if you you or your ancestors came here. Uh, after let's say European contact, you are a settler, uh, and who benefits, who has many benefits because of that. Um, uh, uh, uh dragon movie guy, Shaw, pause the podcast again. Ugh. Yeah. My feed is having trouble loading. You know what? I, we got to wrap it up because this is sure. going to be just a d- fucking disaster again. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. Shaw. You couldn't let us go an hour. Not we, even an hour. Thank you. Not through most of it, nothing. at least, but yes. Okay. We are briefly back online. Folks, we are going to bail out now uh, because if we don't, this is going to turn into uh, uh, me swearing about Shaw again. Who needs to hear that? Uh, I will, though, say again uh, uh, next week. Join us again. It's going to be recorded, so it'll be published, but we'd love to see you come back for this. Uh, let's quickly say, uh, uh, goodbye to Matt, uh, DMG, Richard and Katie, uh, uh, uh jelly duck, jelly duck. And, uh, Jim, uh, you will be on the show next week, but you will be, mm-hmm. uh, in Eastern Canada, in Quebec, uh, La Belle Provence, as you said. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful time. And Thank you, uh, sir. yeah, I think this is a time we just. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, Matthew <laughs> says so. You'd better run, 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 Shaw. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, look at this! Half of DMG's uh, extended family emigrated to Canada as settlers back in the day. There Interesting. You. That is noteworthy. All right. Um, Au revoir. Yeah. Goodbye, as everybody. Say, <laughs> as the kids, as the French kids say, au revoir. Merci. <laughs> Merci.